Hog zero one is in hot. Good gun, good gun. G'day everyone, welcome back to the Warthog Project. Today's video we're going to be talking about the caution panel and how we changed it from a Fidget 64 card to being run completely on Arduino and DCS BIOS. Alright, so here is the caution panel out of the cockpit. If you look at this video that I'll link right here now, um, that's the overview of this. All I'm going to do now is pull it apart, rip that card out, and um, pull all these LEDs out. Okay, so there's the old card. You can see it's a fidget LED 64 and this network of cables came with it. So you can see that every LED in here had its own positive and negative coming to this card. This card had its benefits. Um, the major one being you can select the voltage that it outputs to each LED. It means I didn't have to put any resistors in the circuit at all. Time to get rid of that and I'm get moving to Arduino with a DCS BIOS setup. Uh, so you can see how this was attached. What I'll do now is I'll just pull the top panel off because this top panel is still usable. It'll go on the new one. All I'm redoing is this back panel. That bit being reused and all these little cutouts will be reused. Uh, you can see that the LEDs were just held on with some vinyl wrap, so all I need to do is pull that wrap off. And the LEDs will just fall out. And that's the panel with all the um, LEDs out of it. All right, so this is the caution box design from sort of the back to the front on this side. That's the top panel does nothing other than give it a bit of depth that's the one that's made out of green plastic that you would have seen me replacing and engraving in the last video uh, this one is a spacer this one is another spacer but it's also the one with the the um, holes where it actually gets mounted to the cockpit uh, and then this bit here is the one that had the leds in it you can see i was using two leds for each um, indicator and then that's the rear one that just mounted the fidgets led 64 so that's the old design and where we branch off up the top here is the new design so you can see that i have a new rear plate i'm now using one led per indicator um, i'm doing that just because i don't want to run a separate power supply for the leds i just want them run direct off the arduino itself so i need to sort of keep the amperage down on it so the way i'm going to stop hot spotting with one led in the middle there is to space them further off these leds the further away from the panel they're backlighting the more even the spread will be so that's why i've got this panel right here uh, this is just a a spacer um, i'm going to throw that into freecad and extrude it out to about 25 millimeters and 3d print that spacer so i think there's going to be probably a 25 or 30 millimeter spacer so these will be a fair distance away from that panel which means that hopefully there won't be much um hot spotting you won't see the center led in there it should illuminate it nice and evenly uh, up the top here the, this is the pcbs so when i designed this one here you can see that basically the leds would have been in the center these ones if i click and drag this you'll see that they are not exactly centered in the in the indicators themselves another reason why i wanted them spaced out so they don't hot spot so you can't see that the leds aren't lined up so the reason that these are like that and they are not centered is because i've spaced it for 2.4 millimeter pitch pcb board so all these leds will now be mounted on pcb it's just going to make building my matrix for the max 7219 chip a lot easier to have it on pcb rather than running individual wires to each thing so you can see if i just turn on the guides here you'll see that I've spaced all those LEDs perfectly so the LED will sit in the PCB perfectly spaced and then when I drill those holes and mount them to the back of that panel um, the LEDs will fit perfectly in there you can see that so the red is the black is the cut outline and the red is just a lighter cut um, I do that so again if you if you flick the guides on you'll see that all the LEDs perfectly line up and you'll see that these cuts are in between the two so I'm not cutting directly through a line here I'm cutting in between the two to give it a bit more strength um, I'll show you how I do that in a second 
uh, and these these will just lightly etch across so I know where to put my drill press to drill that hole perfectly. I'm also going to etch the just a light outline of where the LEDs go to make soldering it on easy. I can just set the LEDs up, not without having to count how far they are. If I can just set them straight in there. I also lightly cut this line. So when I put the PCB over the top, you can see that line lines up with the hole. So it makes it a lot easier for me to line up a piece of PCB before I run the cut. All right, so what I'm going to do now is the PCBs. The only reason I've separated into two is because the PCBs that I'm using are not big enough. Um, so I'm going to have to use two to cover the whole panel. Um, other, if I had a larger PCB, I could just cut it out of one. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just take the top one here. I will copy that and I will paste it into my workspace. And I will save that as a DXF. And then I will open that and import that into the LaserCAD software. Okay, so here we are in LaserCAD. You can see how I've got it set up. So I've got these lines are going to be... So the black line is the outline that's going to actually cut the PCB. That's speed 10, power 50. So it's going nice and slow and it's pretty powerful to cut through that PCB. The other ones are pretty fast and not much power because I only want to score the PCB. So what I'm going to do now is just run the blue layer so I'll lay some masking tape on the bed, I'll run the blue layer, and then it will just cut those lines, and then that gives me a reference point to line the PCB up before I run the black and the red layer together, which will score the PCB so I know where to put the LEDs and know where to drill the holes, and we'll cut the outside of the PCB. Alright, so here we are at the laser, I'll just quickly run a test, just so I can see where the outline of it will be. What I'll do now is just run some masking tape on the bed like this, which will give me a reference point. Alright, so now I've got masking tape in the bed, I can just run those blue lines and then that will give me a reference point of where to drop my PCB so I know it's going to cut in the right spot. Alright, so now those lines are there, all I need to do is line those lines up with the centre of the holes on the top and bottom but it makes it a lot easier. I can look through these holes at where that line is and then I know I'm lining it up perfectly. It's a bit hard to catch on the um, camera. But basically I'm looking through the holes on the PCB and lining it up with this so I know that that's the top of the panel. As long as there's holes on the sides and there's holes on the bottom, it'll fit on this PCB. Alright, so I ran that um, outside cut twice just to make sure I'd gone through the whole PCB. Um, it never goes the full way through, but what I can do now is just bend it slowly and it will come off. And then I'll sand the edges and it'll be good. You can see how I've scored the parts where the LEDs are, so I know where to sit them before I solder them. Anyway, I'll do the other one and we're done.
Okay, so here is the rear panel, and here are the um, two PCBs that I've cut. Uh, you can see that I've also scored, so it's pretty easy for me to work out where I need to put the LEDs. And you can see that these PCBs are the ones that I've used throughout the pit that have the solid lines on them. That makes it much easier to do a matrix um, because I don't have to manually connect them all. They're all connected already, and I just break it where I don't need a circuit. Um, so you can see that those two will bolt together like that, and you can see that because I've laser engraved it, those holes line up on those ones, and the LED should fit perfectly in there once it's all soldered up. And then on the back side here is where the, sorry, that way, is where the simple matrix will be wired up. Okay, so there is the same front plate, like I said before, um, engraved, reverse engraved. Uh, Next one that comes along is the, this is the same rear plate. I was using these little white pieces of plastic to diffuse the LEDs. And I've done that with this thing right here. So this is a 25 mil thick 3D printed spacer. It doesn't look pretty because it doesn't have to look pretty. I just printed it at 0.2 layer height at very fast. So this is the very rear spacer. You can see, so that piece bolts over like that. And you can see that there's a space for a single LED in each indicator. And because it's so far from the front panel, it's that far away, I don't get hot spotting. The light's got enough spread in it to fill the whole indicator. All right, so the matrix looks really complicated to wire up, but it's actually not. I use this PCB, which has the lines across it. So that cuts down on a lot of the wiring. So all these LEDs, anodes at the top, um, cathodes at the bottom. So I've shared all the anodes easily, and then you just break the connection on the PCB where you need the matrix to be. I copied my exact matrix for this wiring from Craig at mysimpit.co.uk. If I'll link to his channel down below and I'll pop it up just here. He made the exact same panel as this and he goes into heaps and heaps of detail. So all I did was watch that video and copy his design completely. He also shared the code with me. So I threw that on the Arduino and it worked straight out of the box. It's really easy to wire up your own matrix. Not hard, it's just tedious. Um, soldering so many little wires together and that sort of stuff. So this is just a rear plate that I made that goes on the back of there. You can see that it is an Arduino Uno and this little Max 7219 breakout board. So this used to have an 8x8 display on it. All I've done is worked out which cable goes to which one. Thanks to Craig over at my Simpit, I just copied his. And then on the back, I was just trying to make it look pretty. It didn't come out very well, but it's on the back. Nobody can see it. So I've just got these really long bolts. You just put them through here. So those same bolts line up on every single panel. So that's how the whole thing gets held together like a big sandwich. Goes like that. Then your spacer goes on like this. Then your rear plate goes on like this. Then your PCBs go on like this. So that goes on there and then the whole thing gets um, connected with these standoffs. And then the standoffs support the rear. So that's what the sandwich looks like. And then the rear panel with the Arduino just gets connected and bolted on there with some screws and that's basically it um, if you see now the whole thing's powered off the Arduino so I'll just grab this cable and hook it up and everything will illuminate uh, so Craig's programmed it to fight when it first turns on to illuminate every LED I like it because it just means that I can quickly look at it and see that everything's working um, as soon as it receives signal from DCS BIOS, so as soon as you start DCS, this will sh all turn off and it will start as usual and mirror what's in the game. You can see how there's very limited hotspotting because I spaced the LEDs so far away from it. Uh, whereas if they were too close, you'd see sort of a circle where the LED is in the middle and it wouldn't be so bright on the outside. Anyway, that's it for this video. Make sure you like and subscribe. Make sure you go over and check out Craig over at mysimpit.co.au uk and follow his youtube channel links in the description uh, i'll put some flying video up now because why the hell not thanks pick your switch to aft uhf radio to on on and on 
accelerometer, reset, exterior and internal lights, uh, position lights to flash, console lights on, we'll give ourselves an emergency flood, battery to power, inverter to standby, flat lever to indicated which is all the way down, double check that those are locked back, fire bleed air leak test, signal lamp light test, fuel display selector to main, test our fuel indicator which is working, that's currently moving because they're defueling us. Uh, APU switch to start, which works, oxygen on, APU gen on, CDU and EGI on, boost pumps, left throttle to idle, pitch in your SAS, test, APU gen off, we'll do that once the engine's started, that left engine is now on, right engine start, any start cycle, and oh, sorry, engine start cycle light comes on. There we go, stat all in the green, which is what we want. CDU, INS nav ready, nav mode, EGI, steer point, emergency flood loader can go off, EAC radar altimeter on, verify we've got a map loaded, which we do. Make up tower, pick one one, request taxi. I'm not going the whole way down there, I'm taking 2-2. Two -two. I'm not going to taxi the whole way down the length of the airfield through all this shit. Just to get to the runway. So instead I'm going to go... Yeah, that's right. All I do when the bot tells me what I don't want to hear is I just ignore it. <laughs> I usually do that with this human ATC as well. Just ignore what they're telling me and I'll do whatever I want. It's multiplayer DCS, man. Everybody does that. Alright, we'll wait just here. We will go flaps set for takeoff. Speed brakes are closed. IFF is on. Oxygen is on. Defog DI, so I don't need to worry about. Canopy's down and locked. Seats armed. Speed brakes are closed. Exterior lights, anti collision on. Position flash to steady. Landing lights on. Where are we again? Make up. Make up tower, pick up one. Single ship A10 taking runway 224 departure. Make up. No warning lights, flaps down 80%, brakes off 100%. Flaps up. We are. I love it. Make up tower, big one, one clear the active departed to the west. Good day. What we will do now is fence in. Chuck that on that. Nav video on. Dismiss, there's not much we need to change in that is there now. We didn't bring any LGBs. Laser arm, gun arm, master arm. Firmware out. Engines, gauges are good. No warning lights. Fuel, we've got 7,300 7, pounds. Bombs to two, five, three. Dead. And one, three, four. External lights all off. Counter measures to semi. 
Can I already see shit? Holy crap, this flare is such an improvement. How good is that? I can actually see these targets and we're like 25 miles away. And look how clear it is. I should have brought a cluster bomb to this, shouldn't I? Look at that. Look how close they all are together. Anyway. comes our first shot. So it tracked the wrong one. I don't want to track that one. I want to track that tank. I don't want to track that one. I want to track that one. Awful. Bombs away on that. Like one of these in the same pass. Not with a Maverick though, though, with a laser rocket. How far away are we? 5.2, 5.0, 4.9, that'll do us. Single rocket away. Hopefully that tank will explode and this guy will explode. Bang. Did the tank explode? What, what the Maverick hit? Was that the tank? It was the tank. That's what I like to see. I reckon one rocket right in the middle of those two might actually both having a look at us. I wonder if the rocket will um, get both of them. Got one of them is he alive still? There he is. That's right, we're getting a bit close now. 2.7 miles is too close. We need to punch it down this little valley here with a Explosion effect. Right, let's go in with guns. I'll give a laser rocket to this guy and a gun run to his friend. He's hit. Where did his friend go? Here's his friend. Bum, bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Oh, shooting at us. There he is. Shit. Got some problems. We're on fire for one. Oh, we obviously missed one of the ooh, what have we got here? The fire's out. Leaking lots of fuel. The stalls are going off. Right engine oil pressure, wing pump, right fuel pressure, right gym, and CICU. Yep, we're all good. Left engine looks good. Controls feel pretty, feel pretty fine. That's a lot of fuel coming out of that. I think we're going to have to bug right out. Back of that. Let's go. Safe, safe, and safe. Uh, we've got no HUD either, but that's alright, we don't need a HUD. Just need to navigate back to Maycock, which is... Uh, let's just go Dismiss, and load up the CDU page on that. And we'll go back to Mission, uh, Function 2 for Nav, Divert to Maycock. 
horses over there. We might go two, four, nine, point five, point seven. Make up tower, pig one one inbound. That's what happens when you go for a gun run and you didn't see the ZSU that was still alive. I thought I got them all, but I was wrong. Uh, Make up tower, pig one one, emergency aircraft, um, straight into approach on zero four on final Make up. Get down below 200, not even try the speed brakes. Here's my hydraulic pressure looking. Not too bad. Speed brakes are out. Gear down, flaps down, three down and locked. This. Make up tower, pig one one, uh, emergency aircraft, short final zero four, make up. Winging it. It's actually pretty smooth, I think. Speed brakes are out, flaps are down, three down unlocked, landing lights are on. I feel like I'm short, just need Altitude. to give it a little Altitude. bit of throttle. She's taking lots of rudder when you throttle up. That's all right. All right like a glove. Throttles. Speed brakes in, flaps are up. Make up to our people on my career. 